Hey everyone, here's another video and today we're going to be installing DaVinci Resolve 15, a non-linear video editing suite from Blackmagic Design. They offer it for free. There is a free version that you can download. It's available for Mac OS, Windows and Linux. And we're going to take advantage of that. Okay, it's proprietary, but as you can see here, it's an extremely capable non linear video editor and 3D compositor. And for free, I don't think you can get any better anywhere on the planet. So go to blackmagicdesign.com. If I go back through that again, Click on the first banner, that will take you to the Resolve page. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Click on download now for the free version. I mean, if you want to purchase the studio, it will cost you $299. Well worth it in my opinion. So you click on download now, choose your platform. You fill out this little form. I mean, you can put whatever information you want in there throw away email, whatever. You don't have to complete this side. Register and download. It will pop up another dialog with a download link. Just download that, pop it into your downloads folder, and we're good to go. Now, we're going to be leveraging a script made by Daniel Tovesen. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Who has very kindly donated a considerable amount of his time in supporting this script. Uh, in this particular instance, there may have been previous releases on 14 before that became stable. But from the 15 open beta release, Daniel has very kindly stayed in step with the releases up until final release um, to create a script that will convert the um, resolve installer from Blackmagic Design into a deb file that we can install under Debian Ubuntu based distribution. So we'll be following that process. But before we do that, we need to set up our system. So I've downloaded it, I've extracted it, and that's the folder it creates. And there's more here now because I've added notes, etc., in the script from Daniel. You will see these two items primarily DaVinci Resolve 15 underscore Linux.sh. That's the installer. It's quite a large file, 750 odd megabytes. We don't need these installation instructions because we're going to be using the script. But first, we need to set up our environment so that it's correct and we don't run into issues later. So I'm doing this on Linux Mint. 19 Tara. For NVIDIA cards, it's recommended 390 or higher, 390 as a minimum, and we need to install libssl 1.0.0, ocl icd opencl dev, and fake root. You may find that your system has some of this, if not all of them, if not just emit and exchange, you know, the ones you do have and the ones you don't have and install. If you have problems with libssl for any reason, you can install the libssl hyphen dev version that will install libssl 1.0.0 anyway. It's just a way of getting around that problem if you can't find it in your distributions repositories. For NVIDIA cards, it is mandatory to install NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit and with AMD cards, I believe it's the MESA OpenCL ICD, which is their version of the toolkit. The reason being DaVinci Resolve needs to see the compute capability of your GPU, even if it doesn't directly use, utilize it in any great degree, it needs to see the compute capabilities of your GPU in order to work. If it can't see that, if it doesn't detect um, CUDA or OpenCL, it will fail to run. The next step 
we need to create some symlink for DaVinci to be satisfied in order to run correctly. And these are the symlinks you need to create. I'll leave all of this in the video description underneath. And we need to set up our build environment. So we need to install Build Essential, Linux Source, Linux Head is generic. And we're good to go. And for good measure, if you haven't already, install FFmpeg. It's a fantastic command line tool. You can actually download um, GUIs that will sit on top of this to allow you to convert videos. One example is Handbrake. There are many, many other GUIs for FFmpeg. Or you can convert from the command line, which is what this line is doing. It looks complicated, but it's not. It's just setting the environment for encoding from our input to a much higher output video. CRF1 is actually what this value here is what controls the quality. And as, as it says here, the higher this value, the lower the quality. So you can play with this and adjust it for when you are doing conversions. But I'll come back to this in a separate video because that is a separate subject. For now, what's highlighted here, these are the required dependencies that must be fulfilled in order for DaVinci to install correctly without error. So once you've done this and you've gone through optionally install FFmpeg, but you must do the other stuff, reboot your machine so that it comes back up with the new libraries and drivers. And then we can go on to the installation. Having downloaded the script from Daniel, extract it and you'll end up with this file make resolve dev 1502.sh open up a terminal now depending on which version you downloaded you put that in as the string put a space at the end for the free version you type light press return and you'll be presented with a disclaimer you will see immediately this folder has been created because it's going to extract everything from this sh into this folder whilst it does its conversion. You just get a disclaimer from Blackmagic Design. I'm going to say no to this because I've already done it. Now it's going to look like there's lots of errors, but there's not. It's because it's already been done. And that's just reporting the fact that it can't do what it needs to do. And as you can see, it's removed that folder now because it didn't complete. Just clear that. If you purchase the studio version, you just type studio at the end and you'll get the same output disclaimer and a yes, no request, and it will create a studio.deb. In my case, I've done the light version because I'm using the free version. So I did that and press return. Once you've successfully created the deb file, you then need to Go to the next step. We follow down on Daniel. Oh, incidentally, installing DaVinci Resolve on anything other than CentOS and possibly Red Hat, but CentOS definitely because Blackmagic Design also provide an ISO image of CentOS 7.3 with DaVinci Resolve embedded, installed already. The one caveat with that is for, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but the ISO that Blackmagic Design have created can only be burned to DVD. It will not work burning it to a USB. It will not install. That's something they've elected to do. I don't understand why they've done it that way, but it doesn't affect me because I'm using Daniel script to do it instead. So. So we've got the package, we've extracted it, we've created the dev file, and now to install it, we run sudo dpkg i, and for whichever dev file you've created, put the name of the dev file afterwards, and it will go off and install. If at the end 
or if during that process you end up with errors, the script is intelligent enough, it will stop and it will tell you what dependencies have not been met or satisfied. And you then have the opportunity to satisfy those dependencies by installing, installing them because they will be listed. Resolve requires libssl 1.00 which is normally not included in many current Debian based distributions, but you can download from these links here. I'll link Daniel's site in the description as well, and I'll, I'll give you direct links to these as well, just so you can get libssl. But as I say, if you follow this, then failing that on its own, you should be able to install libssl dev, and that will also satisfy that dependency. If you do find that you need to install dependencies that you didn't complete here, or if there's any other anything missing on your system that wasn't included here, as stated, the script will tell you, you can then install them, but then you must run dpkg hyphen reconfigure DaVinci Resolve Studio or DaVinci Resolve for whichever version you have in order for Resolve to be able to find the new libraries. If you get problems afterwards, once it's installed, what you should see is an icon in your sound and video or multimedia, whatever your menu structure is on your distribution, you should find a DaVinci Resolve icon ready to roll. What you can do, you can run it from a, a prompt and Resolve will output a lot of information into the console. But what I would recommend before doing that is to run LDD on your Resolve directory and make sure you have all the required libraries installed. It will be very obvious if you haven't, because you will see that there are errors and saying there's, you know, it's missing or something like that. But as you can see in my case, everything's there. So everything's fine in that regard. So that's uh, a quick check. So you can see instantly whether you're satisfying all the dependencies. Once you've done that and you're happy with it, if you want to see the output, you can run that from terminal. Then we can see Resolve starting up, it's listing hardware, adding the Fusion host. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Fusion was a standalone compositor, 3 3D compositor at that. Um, back in version 14, you had to have two, both applications, Resolve 14 and Fusion 9, I believe. Uh, but now it's been integrated in version 15, it's integrated in Resolve directly and it's Fusion. It's here. Very, very, very powerful compositor. So as you can see, there's DaVinci Resolve up and running, perfectly happy. Version 15. And we're good to go. So hopefully that's clear enough for you to follow and install DaVinci Resolves for yourselves on Ubuntu Debian based Linux distributions. If you have any problems, please leave a comment and I'll see what I can do to help. The other thing that I'm trying at the moment in OBS because of the limitation on Linux with Resolve, and I can show you this quickly. It makes sense to see it before you commit to doing it because it can mean a little bit of extra work, especially when it's, um, game recording and things like that where you're separating your audio tracks and things like that as it stands at the moment davinci now supports native linux audio but it doesn't support certain container types for video and if i example that loading in an mp4 h264 it will fail there's nothing there, it just sees it as an audio file. And it's not, as that, is, that is a proper MP4 with audio and video. 
but that's not supported under Linux for some reason. Under Windows and Mac, it works perfectly. No problems whatsoever. But under Linux, you have to jump through a few hoops and converting your media first. And if I import one that I made earlier using a different encoding method in OBS, we now get this dialogue. And this is the dialogue you want to see every time you do a project, unless you specifically set your project up to what you're always going to be using. You'll get this dialog saying that the frame rate differs to the current project settings. Tell it to change it. And if you see that dialog nine times out of 10, you've got good source coming in and it will be fine. Hello, there everyone. There we go. Another video now. So, and I'll show you how I did that in OBS. Done the same in Simple Screen Recorder as well. So if I load up Simple Screen Recorder first, because I'm not using that right now. Just close that, we don't need that anymore. Yeah, that's just the microphone. Right, so here we are. So under the container type, I've gone other, and I'm using MOV, codec name MP MPEG-4. And on the audio codec, I'm using PCM S16LE. In Simple Screen Recorder, at this particular bit rate, it's not great. I think I may have to up this bit rate to get the quality. It's working as a perfect container for DaVinci Resolve. It means I can take this output and dump it straight into Resolve without conversion. But as I say, the bit rate's a bit flaky there, so I may need to adjust that. In OBS, however, I've had very good results. For the types of video that we're watching now, or what I'm doing here, like tutorials or tech tips, again, I still may need to up the video bit rate a little bit. Um, I did see a bit of artifacting on the previous recording I tried. So I may need to play with this value a little bit, but this is working. So on the output, use advanced custom output FFmpeg, save it where you want. Container format is MOV again, video encoder MPEG-4, audio encoder PCM S16LE, and you're good to go. The only slightly minor is that you cannot have more than one audio track. Everything has to be on track one. And that's just the way it is with using FFmpeg encoding in that way. If I separate these tracks, then it fails to recognize them when it's imported. So for these types of videos, it's absolutely fine, I think, to have everything on one, cha one track. So microphone and desktop audio on one track. As there is no desktop audio interfering with it, it's just the voiceover. So in this scenario, it's perfectly fine. So there we are. That's how we get DaVinci Resolve installed on Ubuntu Debian based uh, distributions. And I will see you in the next video where I will show you how to, I will go through the workings of a project and how to use DaVinci Resolve. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much.